Hey everybody, welcome to episode 42 of the Fiberista Files. Today is Monday, July 18th, 2011. I'm Heather. If you're joining me for the first time, I'm your resident Fiberista. I own Highland Handmaids, which is a fiber and yarn shop online, and uh, this podcast as well. If you're returning, thanks for coming in, coming back. All right, um, I'm going to fly through this podcast today. I hope your sound's turned up. I hope you can keep up because there is a but ton of stuff to tell you, and I need to get on it. So first, before I tell you anything else, um, Lala of the Knit Girls pointed out the shirt on the internet one day. It says, Fratelli's Family Restaurant, um, Pizza, Ice Cream, and Tongue, Astoria, Oregon, since 1985. If you get the reference, that's a Goonies reference. Love this shirt. It came today. Thanks, Lala, for the link, and I love my new shirt. I don't know if you guys can move this sloth. Uh, anyway, sorry. Okay, moving on. The first section I have is news. It's before knitting because it's important and news and you need to hear it. So, several things. Number one, I've been making a lot of mentions lately about trips to the coast that I've been making. If you're on my clerk, especially, I've been talking about making trips to the coast. And um, you saw on the podcast one day when I got a call from the school district and didn't get the job. Well, I have accepted a teaching position in a coastal school. It's about two hours south of here. Um, it will require me to move there for the week. I've got to find an apartment or a house to rent or something for the week and then I'll come back on weekends um, and my husband will come down on weekends. Uh, he needs to stay here and um, really we can't move until I have some job security which takes about two years for um, continuing contract to happen. So I'm excited. It's going to be challenging. I hope it's going to be worth it. I'm actually teaching summer school in that district right now, and I'm commuting. It's only four hours of summer school a day, so I'm driving the two hours down and the two hours back. Um, it's still very good money, even even though I'm burning the gas. So uh, today was the first day, and I'm a little tired, but it was good. The kids are good, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, um, all right. My next fiber show is August 1st. It is the Fiber Arts Retreat at the Madomic. I think it's the Madomic Retreat Center. It's in Madomic, which is a, a place in Maine, uh, near Waldeboro. Uh, it is just a one-day vendor invitation. They have a week-long fiber retreat, um, but I'm going to be there on August 1st from 2 to 6.30, and I'll have everything that I have here, plus um, I'm making a fiber order here in a minute, and uh, everything that I die in the next week... Really, it'll be 10 days before I get here, so there's not going to be a lot. <laughs> uh, as much as I can, I'll get dyed up for that fiber show. Hopefully, uh, I won't have a teeny tiny booth where everything's empty because <laughs> I'm a little low on inventory. Uh, but definitely, if you're going to be at the Fiber Arts Retreat, let me know. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all there, and uh, it'll be good. Um, so there will be a shop update. There's a shop update right now. I just activated everything, and then there's not going to be an update for... Well, until August 1st, because everything that I do in the next two weeks is going to have to go for that fiber event. So that'll be awesome. And then I will have all of August to build inventory for the two shows in September and for you folks. So that'll be before I move <laughs> to uh, the coast. So um, August is going to be a busy month for a lot of reasons, and I'll get to another reason here in a minute. But uh, I'm excited. It's going to be a very fiber-filled month. Um, the summer school is only just two weeks in July, so I'll be done on the 29th, so I'll have a month. That'll be awesome. Yay. Okay. All right. Um, in other news, it has been a male love fest for me in the last couple of weeks because I've either received mail that's been awesome or I'm about to receive mail that's epically awesome. So the first thing... Um, I won a contest, and I know, yes, I'm a fiber seller, and, and I know there are people out there that think that maybe I shouldn't um, participate in drawings and stuff for free yarn, because really I can make yarn. But you know what? I'm a consumer, too. So I think, as long as it's not, I, I try hard not to enter contests for stuff that um, I'm participating in, or I should do prizes, or ones that are specifically... Um, for just plain consumers. You know, I don't break the rules. But if it's open to everybody, I'm going to enter. Because I don't often buy yarn, or at least I didn't often buy yarn. So a lot of the yarn that I got was is is a lot of the yarn that I get. It's from contests. I've won a yarn on the house giveaway. Um, I've won a couple of blog giveaways. And this was a blog giveaway that I won. In fact, it was the Knitty.com blog giveaway. Jillian, who is the editor of 
Nitty Spin, the spinning aspect of Nitty, uh, had a contest. She'd been blogging about um, this fiber sampler that she had of rare wools, and she had gone through all of the different samples, all the different breeds, and spun them, and had blogged about uh, her progress. And she ended up doing a giveaway for three awesome items all together, and I won. I won it. I got an email from her. She was like, hey, you won. I'm like, nah, -uh. Shut up. No way. Totally won. So here's what I want. The Fleece and Fiber source book, which is by Deborah Robson, I believe is her name. Um, yes, Deborah Robson. She used to be the editor of Spinoff Magazine uh, and a book editor in a reef, and now... Um, she just did this Fleece and Fiber source book. I think a couple of people have actually reviewed it. I haven't set hands on it yet, and I haven't seen it anywhere locally, but uh, I don't have to because I want it. It's coming to me now. Um, so the Fleece and Fiber source book, which has a retail value of $35. Hand Spinning Rare Wools DVD, which is this one. It sounds like they're loose in here, so I hope they're not scratched. But um, this says Happy Spinning from Jillian. Hi, oh, I can get a personal note from Jillian Marino. This is horrible glare because of the... Uh, plastic wrap that's on it, but it's a two DVD set, two DVD set, Hidden Spinning Rare Wools, How to Spin Them, Why We Should Care. So this talks about um, old British breeds, rare English long, English long wools, classic English down breeds, Welsh and Border breeds, American originals, blah, blah, blah. I'm really looking forward to this. There's two DVDs. The first one is 88 minutes. The second one is 98 minutes. I'm not going to watch this until I get the fiber in my hands because I'm going to be too excited because that's the other thing that I want. This has a retail value of $34.95. The big prize, the super one, the one I am the most excited about, is the Fleece and Fiber Sampler. That's what the um, what Jillian Marino has been spinning. Those breeds, those rare breeds, it's an $85 retail value, and it's coming to me. I'm so excited. I love winning. Can you tell? Sorry. Um, it's good. It's been excellent. Um, I was very excited to receive that email, and I have received the DVD, but I haven't received the other two things yet. The DVD came from Jillian herself. Uh, the other two are coming from the businesses that sell them. So it's going to be a little while, but I'm hoping soon. Okay. Next, Epic Mail. I've told you before about Associated Bag and how nice they were. Now, I had emailed them to tell them how much I appreciated their customer service because I felt like I had earned bad karma by bitching, sorry, about Interweave Reef Press, so I was especially nice to associate a bag. I was very um, thankful to them for all that they had done for me. So, I got, my UPS lady showed up today, this afternoon, and she handed me this package from Associated Bag, and I thought to myself, I haven't ordered anything from Associated Bag, have I? And I was all concerned, so I opened it up, and in it was this letter, and a little business card of the dude who's in charge. Um, this is a... Oh, sorry, the dudette who's in charge. Denise Skenendor, who is the Senior Manager of Sales and Purchasing, wrote me a letter. Heather Kinney. Dear Heather, thank you for your recent compliments about our company. We are glad to hear that you are pleased with our customer service and the timely manner in which you received your orders. Your comments help reinforce the reasons why we place providing second-to-none service at the top of our priority list. We value all of our customers and understand the importance of working with you to meet your needs. Providing you with no-pressure sales tactics and hassle-free service are things we believe in because that is how you should be treated. It is also why we guarantee the lowest prices, no handling fees, efficient delivery, and 100% satisfaction every day. Again, thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts with our customer service representative, Marisol. We look forward to doing business with you in the future. Sincerely, Denise. Then I got a little package. This is a canvas bag that comes from Associated Bag Sells. This. It's a, just a thin canvas bag with a drawstring, and there's all these goodies inside. Look at what they sent me. Just because I was nice to them, just because, you know, they're nice people. I got a little Associated Bag Company truck, uh, an Associated Bag Company ink pen slash highlighter, a spray bottle of Associated Bag Company hand sanitizer. Associated Bag Company clicky Sharpie. Some posty notes from Associated Bag Company. And Associated Bag Company 2011 calendar. And the best prize. An Associated Bag Company ca calculator with a 
special flippy top. That's how you know you've arrived, ladies and gentlemen. You get the calculator with the flippy top. This is total swag for me, and I'm wicked excited about it. Um, who knew that being nice got you stuff? Huh. I should try that more often, probably. Uh, anyway, um, so the, the, the Associated Bag Love Fest continues, and I'm quite happy with it. So um, I don't order very much from them. I've spent maybe $50 from them ever. <laughs> so I feel kind of like they're getting cheated, but uh, as long as I keep telling you guys about it, and, and hopefully you guys try them out, um, it'll be good. So we'll keep the love going. All right. Oh, crap, I just covered my notes. <laughs> the next epic mail I got was unexpected. Uh, totally unknown. Probably undeserved, but totally loved. I got a box today of goodness. Fibery goodness. Looks like this. Look at the size of the box. Let me see if you guys can guess who this box is from just by showing you the goodness that came from it. Do these look familiar to anybody? Oh, these are the chopstick socks that Stephen from Dramatic Knits knit. Because he knit them for me. He gave them to me. This is amazing yarn. He did an amazing job knitting it. This is so soft and wonderful, and they fit perfectly. They couldn't have been custom fit for me better than this. My socks that I knit myself don't fit as well as these socks. They're amazing. So soft. I just love them. Love her. Oops. Steven sent me socks. But he didn't just send me socks. Oh, no. He sent me a swag bag full of candy. I already had one before. That's the wrapper. Um, a bouncy ball. Some crazy slime. All kinds of candies. These strawberry candies have this little strawberry liquid inside them. Oh, it's like the taste of my childhood. Little um, sticky thing that you stick on the wall. Awesome his card. If you are not watching the Dramatic Knits podcast, you need to be. A lovely note, which I'm not going to read you because it's my note, not your note. And then, just because he had it kicking around, he de-stashed to me a butt ton of DK weight wool. Butt ton. I don't know how well you can see all that in there, but there's a ton of it. There's a lot of yarn. I was just exclaiming to my husband the other day, um, how I want to knit all of the monsters out of the Book of Knitted Monsters. Now I can. Now I can in beautiful colors with beautiful wool. Because now I have it. Steven, you are a man after my own heart. I am telling you what. This is way too much and I shouldn't accept it. But I'm going to because it's awesome. Clearly, I have zero problem accepting gifts from people. If you'd like to send me something, feel free. Let me know. I'll send you my address. Steven's got it. He can... He can send, to send you my address so you can send me stuff. So feel free to send me stuff. Um, don't send me stuff. I don't need anything. Oh, my word. I have a an embarrassment of riches right now. Really an embarrassment of riches. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Knitting. This bit is the knitting. Again, I'm going to speed up because I'm already 13 minutes in. That's how long I wanted this whole podcast to be. Okay. I have been knitting, and I have finished projects. In fact, I finished three projects that you didn't even know I was knitting because they're that fast. Uh, Amelia Bella from Keegan Lane Yarns and the His and Hers podcast has really taken this cause um, to the public. And the cause is Sweet Caroline. This is a project for knitters to send knitted preemie baby caps, uh, baby beanies, to either um, the NICU closest to... Melissa, Amelia Bella, or their own closest uh, NICU. So I've been knitting preemie baby caps. This is the first one. This is knit out of String Theory yarn and CJ Kopeck Panda Base. This is knit out of Enchanted Knoll Farms and String Theory yarn. And this one is knit out of Debbie Bliss Cashmerino. So I have three hats. They're all knit on size US 2 or 2.75 millimeter. You can see they're all different sizes. This is light fingering weight medium fingering weight, and actually a DK weight. Cashmerino, I believe, is DK. And they all have these little wee um, <laughs> I-cord things at the top. Um, each one of these, these two weigh 10 grams each. They're very, very small. These are 72 stitches across. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I mentioned it and talked about the project in my Intention Yarns blog. If you go to intentionyarns.com slash reveal, 
Um, and the Debbie Bliss Cash Merino is a little bit bigger, so this would be a less creamy, creamy. This is knit in plain stockinette. This is knit in plain stockinette but has stripes. And then this one is done with slip stitch every fourth, every fourth stitch was slipped all the way up. And when you look at the top, the decreases, you can see the decreases all go into each other. It's pretty cool. These are super quick. I knit these in the car this weekend. I was in the car 14 hours this weekend, um, traveling to, to visit family um, and to go to the coast, to the school, to, to do some paperwork and stuff. So um, three little beanie hats. It takes about this much yarn minus this much. I had two balls this size, and when I got finished knitting that little orange one, I had this much left over. So uh, they're about, the little ones are 10 grams, and the big one I think is 20 grams. Perfect way to use a pistache yarn, super fast. Um, I am going to adapt the pattern to knit it top down, I think. I don't like casting on 72 stitches. Just so I'm going to knit cast on three, and I'm going to do the I cord first, and then I'm going to go down and increase until I get to 72 stitches, because for some reason that feels like less work for me. I am a toe-up hoe. I'm a toe-up. What's a politically correct way to say that? I don't know. Anyways, I do toe up because I hate casting on. So let's see. This is the equivalent, I guess. Top down would be the equivalent. All right. Um, it's a great way to use up sock scraps to try out different stitch patterns. Uh, it's great car knitting. You don't need the pattern very much at all. You really don't. And I get horribly car sick if I read a pattern or a chart in the car. So uh, this has been a good project for me. I'm really enjoying them. These will be going with my friend Leanne, who is a NICU nurse, uh, NICU, she's a CNA, she works in the NICU, and they'll be going with her. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, 30th birthday socks are done! I think when the last time I podcasted with you guys, um, I think I was working with Katie and I was almost done the second sock. They are both done. They're gorgeous! They're blocked and dried and wonderful. Now, the heels look a little bit like boobs. They have like this little nipple thing going on here. I modified the afterthought heel. Most afterthought heels are done as toes. So like when you do a cuff down sock, you have um, knit to the last, knit two together, knit one, and then knit one, and then slip slip knit. So they the decreases go like this, like a straight bar this way. I actually did a decrease that looks more like a hat decrease. I did knit so many stitches, knit two together, knit so many stitches, knit two together, um, that way. So it's a little bit different. Um, I wanted the rounder heel. I don't like the toe heel look. I wanted a nice round heel. Um, I All of my notes about this heel are on my Ravelry Projects page for this. Um, you can see it there. There will be some changes I'll be making to the next one. I am going to do this heel again. I'm going to knit more rows before I start the decreases, and instead of doing like the hat where you get to the last few stitches and then you put the yarn in and pull it tight, I'm going to actually kitchen her the last couple of stitches so it lays flatter. Because this does have a little bit of a bump. I don't think I'm going to notice it when I'm wearing it, but it does have a little bit of a bump right there. So These are the 30th birthday socks knit out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Amble Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. 100 grams, I think it was, I don't remember if it was 400 yards or 435 yards. Um, this is how much I have left. I have 20 grams left over. That's enough for two baby hats. I'm excited. They will have stripey Reese's Pieces. This is the Reese's Pieces colorway, and uh, I'll be making hats, baby hats out of this. This is great. Throw this in my purse with a pair of needles, and I'm good to go. Um, I knit those on US 2 2.75 needles and use 64 stitches around. All right, Ishbel, moving along. Ishbel, I have completed charts A and B, one repeat of each, one chart A and one chart B. Now it says for the smaller size, which is the size that I thought I was going to knit, it says knit A, knit B, knit A one more time, and then do C. But really, with two charts left, I still have all this yarn. And so I'm wondering if I have enough to do A and B again, which is, you know, maybe two inches worth of, of knitting, Granted, these rows do get longer as you go. Um, do I have enough to do A, B again, and then A, and then C? So instead of A, B, A, C, it'll be A, B, A, B, A, C? Do I have enough? I think I do. And if I have to shorten C a little bit, I don't really care. 
I think I can do it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. This got no love really this week. Um, after I hung out with Katie that day, I haven't touched it. Even Star, I've gotten through that Even Star row and the rest row, the recovery row, as I call it. After it, I'm not even going to show that to you because uh, you, you're not going to see any difference. So um, the Ishbell is being knit out of handspun. That is CJ Kopak Shetland top, combed top in the top hand colorway, knit on size US 5 or I wrote this down 3.75 millimeters. The Even Stars knit out of Nick Pick Shadow Lace in the Midnight Heather colorway on US 4s with 3.5 millimeter needles. All right, Frog Prince. I mentioned last week, I think, or maybe it was just on Plurk, that I'm going to be knitting um, a toy for my sister in law's, my brother and sister in law's future baby. They are pregnant, they're going to have a baby at the end of January. Their nursery is going to be like wild animals, jungle sorts of thing. So I'm going to be knitting lots of small little projects for them. I'm not doing anything epic like a blanket because we all know how long those blankets take me. So I'm using Peace Fleece Worsted and a US 7 or a 4.5 millimeter needle. Um, the colorways I'm using are Shaba Green and Chicky Masala, which is a yellow, so a green and a yellow. Um, this is the belly. I've done the belly. You can see that there's a lot of, like, the gauge is not very tight because I'm using US 7s, um, but that's okay. I'm going to felt this a little bit before I stuff it so that the holes kind of tighten up a little bit. This is the back. And this is the head. Now, the head was knit front and back. This is the chin, and then the eyes are going to go right here. This was knit front and back back and forth, whatever you want to say. I think I could have knit that and joined it and knit in the round and it would have been way faster. Not very pleased that I didn't read the whole thing to see if I could knit that in the round before I just blindly followed the directions. Um, I have to do the feet and legs still. Uh, I will be knitting the feet, like the toes are knit back and forth on like five stitches or something and then you have to seam it. Not seaming toes. I'll do a five stitch I cord and call it good. Um, I like this yarn. Peace Fleece Worsted is a main, Peace Fleece is a main company. They have a partnership with um, some farms in Russia. This is what their label looks like. Looks like this. This is the Shaba Green. Um, it's peacefleece.com. They have a um, sort of their way to world peace is through wool. Um, it's a very fun yarn to work with. It's a little rustic. Um, sometimes there's some veggie matter and some, you know, unevenness in it, but it's a wonderfully soft. It's 70% uh, wool, 30% mohair blend. So that's the frog prints. That's everything I'm knitting. How many minutes did that take me? Like 10? Crap. Buster. Dye pots. Let's show you what I've been dying, shall I? Um, I'm going to go through this lightning fast because there aren't a lot of colorways. There are a lot of different fibers, but not a lot of colorways. I find that when I'm in a good mood, I dye happier colors, and I've been in a pretty good mood this past few weeks. <laughs> As you can tell by the colors that I'm dying. I'm going to keep bending out of frame. I'm sorry. It's down here on the floor. Don't look at the grays, okay? All right. So, in fiber, we have... I did the rest of my Texas Kid Mohair blend. This one is called Just Before Dawn. It's a blend of blues, and I brushed the very outer layer with some black. Uh, so it's a very subtle tonal difference, but I think it will knit up beautifully. The other Texas Kid Mohair is called Bright's Rainbow, and oh my god, is it bright. Super bright. This is like what Rainbow Bright would use as her color palette if she were grown up and she listened to like Annie DeFranco and Indigo Girls and was an artist. It's the colors that she would, she would use. So this is called Bright's Rainbow. Um, I did some Loki's Whim. I have two in Superwash BFL, one in Corydale Cross, and one in the mixed BFL, but the mixed BFL one is in a spindle kit. Um, speaking of Superwash, I did the Superwash Merino Bamboo Nylon Blend. This is a Limitless. It's uh, Dusky Blues, Blacks, and Gold. I used up the rest of that. I have no more of that. i going to make a dye order badly. Uh, also in Corydale Cross, I did, this is a new colorway. It's called Up to Camp. 
Faded green. This is like a, it's a plummy lavender, but it's very faded. A nice barn brick red and a lake blue. It's supposed to look like camp. It looks kind of like camp, doesn't it? Um, I also did that in Falkland. I have Corydell and Falkland in the same colorway. Up to camp. Mixed BFL. I did that one version of Loki's Whim, and then I have three of these. This is called Lobster Pot. It's a hot coral which fades with this um, mixed BFL. And it's spot dyed with navy blue and black. Navy blue and charcoal gray, not black. And uh, I left some undyed areas in there. So it will be a very muted, subtle yarn, I think. But it's beautiful. I just really like this. Um, I don't often do a lot of these really subtle tones, but every once in a while it's kind of nice. Speaking of unsubtle, this is called Gem, like from Gem and the Holograms. Since I talked about Rainbow Bright, I figured I might as well talk about Gem and the Holograms. This is Falkland, and Falkland does not dye uber bright. You can tell the difference between Bright's Rainbow and Gem and the Holograms. These have a lot of the same dyes. The pink is the same. That pink is the same. The blue here is this blue. doesn't look the same. This also has green and black. Um, the green is the bright kind of limey green that I use a lot and the black, I mean the black looks kind of charcoal and gray. But I think this totally reminds me of Gem and the Holograms, doesn't it? Gem is my name. I don't really remember much about the show but I remember that like one line. Alright. Yarn. Yarn. Again, I don't have a big mix of colorways. I have one skein of Bright's Rainbow in yarn. Holy freaking happy, Batman! I'll focus. How happy is that yarn? This would make the happiest feet ever. Totally killed me to put that in the first sale. Totally killed me. And I don't like colors like that very often, but I'm in love with them. This is Goldfinch. This is a tonal yarn in a bunch of kind of gold. It kind of reminds me of... Um, the Rapunzel and the turning the straw into gold and all that. This is very subtle. This is the, um, that Bright's Rainbow was sugar maple sock. This is silver maple sock, so it has some sheen to it. This would make a great shawlette. This would be so pretty as a shawlette. Lobster Pot in silver maple sock. Same thing, merino, superwash merino, bamboo, and nylon. It's that coral color with the uh, navy blue and the charcoal gray. And you can see that it's just sort of splashed on in spots. There's a woman, Esmerancy, on, no, on Ravelry. I have fiber in my mouth. Esmerancy on... Oh my gosh, hang on. Ugh. Sorry about that. On Ravelry did a shawlette out of Lobster Pot in the Sugar Maple Sock, which I dyed it quite a while ago, and hers is beautiful. Um, I'll link to that in the show notes. If I do show notes this week, because the last two weeks I haven't. And then this one is called View From Above. This is from when I went flying with Katie, and everything was blue and green. Now, this is a different colorway than most because you can see it re-skained here. Ignore that one. This sock yarn is dyed with one yard long color repeats. Half of this, I do two yard skeins. Half of it went into the green. Half of it went into the blue. This is going to have longer color repeats than you'd think. But it is not self-striping unless you were to knit something very narrow. I think if you were to knit like a self-striping sock, a stockinette sock, and an afterthought heel, you'd get between one and two stripes per color. So it would be a very thin stripe if you did it, kind of like my Focus socks were. Um, Focus had four colors. This only has two, so the stripes would be twice as long as the Focus ones. I really want to see somebody knit this up into a stockinette sock with an afterthought heel. I think it would be awesome. It's just me. Obviously, you can do whatever you want with it, but um, that's View From Above, and that's the Silver Maple Sock. That's it. That's all I have. It's all up right now, so go buy some. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Like I said, when I'm happy, I have brighter colors. Oh, I'm dying. It's so hot in here. It's like 80 degrees in the house right now. We don't have an air conditioner. We live in Maine. What am I going to use that for, like, five days out of the year? Okay. Um, that was dye pots. Processes. When I started dyeing, I bought these squirt bottles. This is the ketchup bottle I bought from our restaurant supply store, Wide, wide Mouth and Cap. 
These cost me like a buck something, buck ten. These were good, but they weren't great. These are 12 ounces, and when I dye, I generally do two cups or four cups of a dye solution. So that's either 16 ounces or 32 ounces. This 12 ounce bottle does not hold that much, and I only had six of them. So I had a really hard time batch dyeing because I had to use up so many bottles, or I had to find a bowl to put the dye in, or I had to do something else. So these were good to start out with, but they were limiting my growth. I was ordering dye the other day. One of the dye companies I use is called Pro Chemical and Dye. Love them, love their stuff. They, I looked at tools and supplies, and they had squirt bottles. And I was like, I don't understand why I've been looking for squirt bottles so long when they have squirt bottles and they're cheap. Again, under a couple of bucks. This is the 16 ounce bottle. It does have a narrower mouth. I don't know if you can see how narrow that mouth is. Maybe. It's narrower than the ketchup bottle. I said, if I'm in a hurry, I have to use the funnel so that I don't spill stuff everywhere. Um, and this is the cap, and it comes with, um, you trim this to the thickness that you want so you can get a, a thick stream or a thin stream, and it has a little red cap that goes on the top to cover it. So if you needed to leave dye solution in there, you could. I don't, but you could. And then this is the four cup. So the two cup and the four cup. So if I want to do a lot of a particular colorway, I can now. I bought eight of each. So that I have, I there's only one colorway I have that has eight dyes, so eight colors in it. So uh, I can do this now. I can do peacock much more easily. I can do yay I'm gay much more easily. I can do all those colorways that take me forever much faster because I can put an entire um, dye solution in a bottle, one bottle. So Pro Chemical and Dye, dirt cheap, totally use them, love them. Okay, growth. This is important. I hope you're listening. Highland Handmaids has decided to participate in a fiber club. We are going to have a fiber, not a fiber club, a yarn club. It's not just going to be Highland Handmaids, though. It's too much work for one person, I think. This yarn club is called the Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club. Follow the link in the show notes to go to the Ravelry group or search on Ravelry for the Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club. It's three dyers. Myself, Highland Handmaids, Melissa from Keegan Lane Yarns, and Lisa from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I emailed them both one day and said, listen, I got this idea. Because I love the idea of yarn clubs, but I don't want a bunch of scansy yarn from the same dyer. I'm still at the point where I personally am trying to try out a bunch of dyers um, and different kinds of yarn. So I, I just don't want a dozen skeins of the same dye company. Especially if you kind of don't really like their colorways. If you don't like one or their way that they dye, you're going to be stuck with all of them. So I asked them if they'd be interested in doing a three-month club where each month one of us dyed the colorway and sent out to the club members. So that really we get the benefits of having a three-month club and all of the community that that builds and all of the fun stuff and everything like that. But there's only one month of the work. And they, being awesome like they are, clearly said yes. So on July 20th, we're going to open signups for the Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club. Now, this is where it's tricky. On July 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to post a link. Melissa and Lisa will post links, too. We're going to post them everywhere we can, all over the interwebs. That link will take you to a place where you can sign up for the Yarn Club. However, of all of the entries that we get, we're going to randomly pick 30 people. We can only have 30 people in the club. That's the max that we can do in a month, at least for this first while we're still getting it going. Melissa has done yarn clubs before, but neither Lisa or I have. So we need to sort of learn this process um, with 30 people. So 30 people were randomly picked. You can sign up between July 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern and July 23rd. On July 23rd, we're going to close the signups. We will, uh, I'm going to, I'm doing the September shipment. Melissa is, no. Lisa's doing the October shipment, and Melissa is doing the November shipment. You sign up for one, you sign up for all three. Each one of us will invoice you each month, so there's no way to pay in advance, but you'll pay a monthly, um, you'll be invoiced monthly by the dyer who's going to be sending you that month's yarn. So, um, all of these details are in the Ravelry group. Go to Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club in Ravelry and read up on the rules. They are still kind of subject to change, but we've got the basic bones. Um, there's going to be a sock weight, there's going to be a worsted weight, and there's going to be a lace weight. I'm not telling you any more than that. These will be exclusive colorways and exclusive um, 
goodies. There's going to be goodies in the package as well. That's part of part of the package is yarn, and part of it is sort of a local luxury stuff. You're going to get some goodies from our local areas because I'm in Maine, Lisa is in Pennsylvania, and Melissa is in Massachusetts. So we're all going to have things that local to us, local um, merchant goodies. We are so excited. We hope you are too. We hope this is going to be an awesome club. Um, if it goes well for us all, we will do it again, and we may do it with fiber, and we may do it with patterns. Um, who knows what the future will bring. Now, the first invoice is going to go out on August 1st. I will be shipping, I will be sending you an invoice via PayPal on August 1st. That's a little bit early because you're not going to get your yarn until towards the end of September. However, paying on August 1st is going to reserve your spot. We need to know that you can commit to making these payments because you're going to have three payments to make. Um, you'll have a week to make that payment and then if you haven't made the payment by August 8th, I'm going to find somebody else for the club. So we'll have reserves. So in case somebody drops out, we'll, we'll have somebody to fill that spot. Um, so yeah, we're excited. Trifecta of Awesome Yarn Club. It's going to be yarny goodness for everybody. And you don't get the same thing from the same people every month. Even though I know some of you guys buy from me like weekly. But anyway. Um, so that is growth because it's going to be awesome. All right. Grabby hands. Traveled north, traveled to the coast, and then traveled north um, to the coast to go to school, and then north to visit um, my husband's godparents. And while we were there, they said, hey, in Prescott, there's this new yarn store. This is the yarn store. It's called Yarn, Glass, and More. It is in the Aroostook Center Mall in Prescott. Now, Prescott is about two and a half hours north of me, so it's not really a local yarn store to me. Worth it to drive the two and a half hours north, more so than it is to drive the one hour wet, uh, east to the local yarn, the yarn store that's closest to me. Fiberphilia doesn't make me as happy as this place does. This is called Yarn, Glass, and More. Now, I went quickly. The husband and the dog were still in the car with the air conditioning going, and he said, go quick. And I said, okay. So I went quickly. And this place is freaking amazing. They have a huge retail space. Now, it's in a mall. It's not in like somebody's rinky dink house. It's a mall space, so it goes all the way back. Um, it's the size of like a fashion bug. Like it's a good size store. Wall to wall yarn. They don't have Noro. They have every kind of Noro. They don't just have Cascade. They have every kind of Cascade. They have all the yarns. It's amazing. Amazing. I mean, it's yarn store pricing. It's not internet pricing, but that's totally okay. The woman was very nice. The woman behind the counter. She was crocheting something. She left me alone. She asked me if I needed any help. She said, I'm here if you need me. Didn't get up. Didn't bother me. Didn't follow me around. It was awesome. Um, I did ask her if there was a bargain bin, and she said, no, there's no bargain bin, but there is a table here, and there are two walls. All of the Noro, all of De Debbie Bliss, all of the Oracania, 30% off. Are you kidding me? Noro, 30% off? That makes it almost affordable, worth the color and all that other stuff. So, <laughs> I bought Noro. Um, this is Noro. I paid, it, it was like $13 by the time my discount was taken. Um, this is Silk Garden Sock Yarn in colorway S313. This is colorway S313. You can see there's some red, um, teal blue, bright blue, sky blue, a little bit of brown, some navy blue and black, some olive green. I've already cast on socks. Um, these are going to be Jaywalker socks, but they're going to be, I'm going to stripe. I divided the yarn into two balls, so I'm going to do two row stripes. And they're both going to be Noro, but I'm going to be at different colors on each of them. So I'm going to have jaywalkers that are all Noro, but are two color stripes. So here's my toe. It's going to be 76 stitches on US 2, 2.75 millimeter. So um, I did do the toe in a solid color, and I will do the heels in a solid color, just because I don't want to worry about changing yarns if I don't have to. So there's that. So I bought that, and then they had Malibu in a bucket. And the little bucket was crying, please take me home. Of course, I'll take you home, little Malabrigo. This is Malabrigo colorway 623 Nostalgia. I have no idea what, I haven't taken this out of the bag, so. US 7 to 9, so this must be worsted. It's called Nostalgia. It's, again, green, it's kind of the peacocky colors. Lime green, teal green, peacock blue, that glare is terrible, and uh, navy blue. I'm not taking it out of the bag, so if I take it out of the bag, I'm going to pet it, and it will felt. Um, so navy blue, and teal blue, and all that good stuff. 
This was ten ninety five. I don't know if that's a lot for Malabrigo or not. Don't care. It's pretty. And she was like, "That's gorgeous, knit up." And I'm like, "Ooh, good to know." Okay. Um, the other thing that the yarn store has that's really cool. She asked me for my name, and I was like, "Okay." So I gave it to her, and she said, "Well, here's what we do. For every okay, it doesn't have my they have a rewards program where every two hundred dollars that you spend in the store, they give you twenty dollars worth of store credit." It does not take long to build up $200. And they have, like, it tells you, I have to spend $175.08 more. So I spent $25, so I have to spend another $175, and they'll give me $20 off of a future purchase. Now, I don't know how often I'm going to be at this store because it is two and a half hours north, but they'll keep their machine, their POS tracks it. And so every time I go, I'll earn points. And if somebody else goes to Presque Isle and they buy me yarn, I can say, tell them you're me. Tell them you're Heather Kinney. And then those points will be added to me as well. So um, that's awesome. Okay. I think that's it. 41 minutes. That's a little bit better than usual um, lately. <laughs> so I guess that's it. That's all I have this week. Thank you guys for your patience while I've been going through these long episodes. I really hope that, especially without an update in the next couple of weeks, it'll be a little bit faster. So, uh, who knows? Maybe you'll find it entertaining again. Until next week, guys, happy spinning and knitting. Thanks for tuning in.